The title of this message is Living in a Righteousness Reality. When I was a young Christian, I got this. I heard a message. I read scripture. And I got this reality that God was calling me to, to live in a righteousness reality. And I pray today that you'll get it. You know, how many people have ever seen a Christian who's not walking strong in the Lord? Let me tell you that one of the reasons they're not walking strong in the Lord is because they haven't gotten this message yet. They might know it in their head, but they don't know it in their heart. Hallelujah. And God wants to open our eyes to see that by the grace of God, He makes us righteous in Him. And so, Father, I pray one more time that you would open up our minds and our souls in Jesus' name. I want you to know that word righteousness is a strong word, and it will help you to walk strong and stand strong. The word righteousness can be defined as right relationship with God and right living for God. Right relationship with God and right living for God. E.W. Kenyon said, righteousness is defined as the ability to stand in the presence of God without the sense of guilt or inferiority. Who wants some of that? Who wants to stand with before God without any guilt, any inferiority? Amen. But I added to that definition. Righteousness is also the ability to stand in the world in the midst of trials, Storms, accusations, fear, and doubt, and not be swayed because you know who is in you and who makes you righteous. How many people here move too much? You know, you have good days and bad days. Hallelujah. You have days where you're standing strong with God and, and days where you're being beaten up by the devil. I want you to know that there's a spirit of righteousness that God wants to give you. That there, there won't be that fluctuation. You'll be able to stand in the midst of the storms. Can you say amen, Kim? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. It's the ability to stand knowing who's in you and who makes you righteous. Amen. Who wants some of that? I want some of that. Give me some of that. Amen. I have another definition of righteousness. I just kept defining it. Okay. I want to add to that definition. What can I say? Righteousness is also a spiritual swagger. No, it is. Let me tell you something. It's a spiritual swagger knowing that Jesus' blood not only forgave your sins and washed you clean, it it, it also literally took away all unrighteousness. I want you to know, there's not enough swagger in the church. Amen. Who here believes in Jesus? Is there any saved people here? Is there any people here that the devil's afraid of? Come on, somebody say amen. No, seriously. You know? Hallelujah. I'm God's. His hand is on me. His, His spirit is in me. I'm not just a natural man. I'm a man of the Lord. Hallelujah. I've got righteousness in my bones. So what is righteousness? It's a spiritual swagger. Knowing that Jesus forgave my sins and he he washed me clean and he he took away all the junk. Some of you are still acting like you're carrying all the garbage of your life. No, you're not. Who wants some of that holy swagger? Say, I want some of that swagger. Amen. Hallelujah. God's good. Amen. I got another definition of righteousness. Sorry, they just kept coming here. Okay. It is trusting. Listen to me. Righteousness is trusting that you are God-loved, God-filled, God-empowered, empowered to walk with him and partner with him to bring about his kingdom. That's righteousness. I'm God-loved. I'm God-empowered. I'm God-filled. And I'm God-filled and empowered for a reason, Paul. To do something for God. I got righteousness in me. I got glory in me. You know, uh, it's, 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 for some people it's hard to, 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 to get this. Okay, you know, how many people know my first name? What's my first name? Ralph. Okay, do you know I'm King Ralph? King Ralph, that's right, Lisa, I am. That's right, he is. I'm King Ralph. Hey, Jeff, stand up. Are you King Jeff? Hallelujah. Joe, stand up. Are you King Joe? 
Yeah, come on, damn King Joe. Come on. Melissa, stand up. Are you King Melissa? No, you're not. You're Queen Melissa. Amen. Trick question there. Amen. I know better than that, Melissa. You know, it, 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 literally, if you were born a Kennedy, you would know it. And I'm talking about the president's family that was a long time ago. You know that. You know who you are. Well, we're, we're children of the King of Kings. We need to know that righteousness, the, the King's blood flows within us. You need to see yourself as righteous before God. Now, stick with me. Um, Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in the, now in the gospel, how many people know that you're saved by the gospel? And in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith that is written, the righteous man shall live by faith in the gospel. Now to many the gospel is a revelation of their past sins. No, 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 no. Thousand times no. The gospel is not a revelation of our sins. It's a revelation of God's righteousness in us. God does not want us consumed with our past sins and failures. He wants us consumed with his glory inside of us. Romans 10, 9, this is a salvation verse. Listen, it says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. saved. But listen, it says, for with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth confession, resulting in salvation. Hallelujah. Righteous, that right relationship with God, that knowing that he's in me, that knowing that he cleansed me, that knowing that he called me, that knowing I have a purpose and a place, that God has a plan for my life. Hallelujah, and I'm going to do great things for God. Righteousness. Amen. With salvation comes righteousness. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe this? Do you believe to God you are not a worthless worm that made it out of hell's fire? Do you believe that the new birth restored your fellowship with God? That you were both forgiven and made right in the God's sight? Do you believe that? Do you believe that you are a precious child of God made righteous, acceptable by the precious blood of Jesus? I hope you believe that because that's what we preach. You see, in, in, in Christ, man is legally declared righteous. Legally declared righteous. When you receive the gift of salvation, you get a gift of righteousness. You are given the ability to approach God, to have eternal life, to have God's nature living inside of you, to be free from condemnation, free from guilt, free from accusation. You are free from the consequence of Adam's sins. You are free from the penalty of personal sins. Somebody say amen. You're righteous in Christ. Now, what we, this was, that was just the introduction. I'm about ready to get to my message. And in my message, we're going to do something a little different. I selected four scriptures that mean the world to me. And first, we're going to go over them quickly, and then we're going to go backtrack. And we're going to relook at those four scriptures, and we're going to learn and relearn some precious things. The first of the scripture is one of my favorites, 2 Corinthians 5.21. And it says this. It says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Simply, Jesus bore your sins. Why? That you might bear his righteousness. Jesus bore your sins that you might bear his righteousness. Jesus took your sins away so he could give you his righteousness. He took my sins away. He gives me his righteousness. Somebody say amen. The second scripture, it says in 1 John 1, 9, and I hope you're writing these down. It says, for we can, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all, 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 cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Very good. Okay, very simply, our responsibility is to confess our sins. That's all. You do bad, you confess it. Now, you have to understand the scripture is written to Christians. Okay, so you sin, confess it. 
Okay, his responsibility is to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Very powerful. The third scripture I'd like to read is Ephesians 6, 13. It says, take up the full armor of God so that you'll be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything to stand, stand firm, therefore. And it says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Which is the largest piece of armor a warrior would wear? Everybody say it's his breastplate. And that breastplate is righteousness. Whose righteousness? God's righteousness. We put on his righteousness. It's not about, about my righteousness. In the battle, I put on his righteousness. Somebody say amen. Do you see yourself with a breastplate? Do you see your heart protected by God's righteousness? Hallelujah. Amen. And the last scripture is Romans 5, 17. It says, For if the transgressions of the one death reign through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gifts of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Everybody say, gift of righteousness. Did you receive the gift of salvation? No. How many people here received the gift of salvation? Did you earn the gift of salvation? Can you ever earn the gift of salvation? Well, whatever thinks that you can earn the gift of righteousness, it's a gift. It's freely given. Somebody say amen. amen. He gave it to you. It's by faith that you receive the gift of righteousness. And if you do, it says you will reign in life. Everybody say King Ralph reigns in life. Everybody say King or Queen me <laughs> reigns in life. Amen. Hallelujah. There are four keys to living a righteous, righteousness reality. See, I don't want you to just to listen to this message. I want this message to live inside of you. I want this to become your reality, that you really are righteous before God, that you really did receive this gift. And there are four keys to this. The first one is you need to own it. You need to keep it. You need to fight with it. You need to reign it. Say those with me. Own it. Keep it. Fight with it. Reign with it. What's the it? A righteousness reality. Okay? And, and, and it's God's righteousness. It's God's righteousness reality in us. Hallelujah. So let's go back to those four scriptures and let's dig a little deeper. Father, Lord, just open our hearts, oh God. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. It says, for he made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, Jesus, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He made him who knew no sin to be sin. I have a few questions to ask you. What did Jesus become for you? He be, what did Jesus become for you? What did Jesus become for you? Yes. What did Jesus become for you? My sin. What? Think about this. It's almost horrific. What did Jesus become for me? He became my sin. Got another question. What did Jesus take away from me? What did Jesus take away from you? What, did Jesus take your sins away? Did he take... Did, this is birthday time, man. What did Jesus take away from you? Your sins. What does Jesus give to you? Whose righteousness? God's righteousness. His righteousness. What does Jesus give to you? God's righteousness. So let's ask these questions again. What did Jesus do for you? He became your sin. What does Jesus take away from you? What does Jesus give to you? God's righteousness. Now own it. Own it. Own it. Hallelujah. Say with me, my sins are gone. I own that. Hallelujah. Own it. Uh, my sins are gone. Mikey, your sins are gone. Hallelujah. Own it. That's me he's talking about. I'm holy and right with God. My sins are gone. Own that. God's righteousness lives inside of me. Own it. Own it. It's yours. Somebody say Amen. You see, we need to own his sacrifice. Jesus really did die for you. You need to own the work of redemption. Hallelujah. Next Sunday, I believe, we're taking communion, celebrating the redemptive work of God. 
You need to own forgiveness and cleansing. Can you say amen? You need to own the gift of righteousness. It's mine. I'm right before God. Hallelujah. Not by works of righteousness that I have done. It's his mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. And, but there's also things, if you own certain things, there are things you need to disown. Okay, and some of you are owning the things you're supposed to disown. And if you're going to own righteousness, you need to disown the emotions of inferiority. And I would venture to say that if up in this area was a pool of everybody's inferiority in this building, I would drown. Come on now. Because the body of Christ is not disowning inferiority. The devil brings you thoughts and, you know, I'm not this, I'm not that, I've done this, I've done that, 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 that. Hey, no, that's not, I'm not going to buy that. That's not my mail in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. You need to disown emotions of inferiority. You need to disown condemnation. When, there is therefore no condemnation in Christ Jesus for them that walk According to God's spirit, somebody say amen. And when, when condemnation comes, no, I, I, I'm not claiming that. I'm not owning that. I'm owning that I'm in right relationship with God. You need to disown guilt and shame. Somebody say amen. You need to disown the feelings of separation. I remember there was a season in my life decades ago, many, many moons, where it just seemed like I was just feeling like yuck towards God. I was doing everything I knew to do, but I just didn't, I felt so disconnected. And I would fight it. I'd say, no, in Jesus' name, I am right with God. He who knew no sin was made to be sin on my behalf that I might become the righteous of God. And I meditated and I spoke it. And can I, you want to hear what I found out? Do you, you know, this is how, how the devil tries to use everything. I was feeling so disconnected in the middle of the day. And you know what I found out? That in the morning I was drinking a real large glass of orange juice. And my mother and my family has, um, has um, a, a hyperglycemic. And so by the middle of the day I was feeling so yucky. And I attributed that towards my relationship with God. I stopped drinking orange juice in the morning. Drinking chocolate milk instead. No, 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 I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> God's good. But I mean, there was a point in my day where I would, I would just feel like, oh, nobody loves me. God loved me. I must have sinned. Have you ever felt that way? And I didn't sin. Hey, if I sinned, I would have known it. Come on now. I would have been able. See, what happens, we think sin is, is something so vague. No, if it, you sin, you can name it. You know, if you commit adultery, you can name that. If you're looking at pornography, you can name that. If you're doing things that are listed, you can name sin. You know, God's not looking to beat you up over the head. Somebody say amen. God's good. So you need to disown feelings of separation, of shame, and of guilt. There are thoughts that invade your mind, feelings that swarm into your heart. You need to say no to them. You need to refuse to think on them. You are righteous before God by the blood of Jesus Christ, period. You are righteous before God. If you're saved, you are righteous before God, period. Amen. Amen. You need to see yourself as righteous before God. You are called to live in a righteousness reality. Some people say, Pastor, are you saying that we could go sin? No. If you know who you are, you'll be who you're called to be. That will give you power to say no. Amen. Now listen to these next two verses. It says in Ephesians 2.24, as those who are saved, put on the new self. Everybody say new self. Which is in the likeness of God. You're supposed to put on a self that's in the likeness of God. Listen. Which, um, which is in the likeness of God and has been created in righteousness and holiness and truth. Put on a spirit, a new spirit that's like God, created in his image, that's righteous. I get up in the morning and I put on the spirit of righteousness. Somebody say amen. And holiness. Hallelujah. My new self created in God. Amen. Now listen to this verse. This is profound in Philippians 3.9. It says that I might be found in him. I want to be found in Jesus Christ. Not having a righteousness of my own. 
derived from the Lord, good works, things that I could do. But that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I believe in God the Father. Somebody say amen. I believe in Jesus' his Son. I believe in the resurrection, but I also believe that the resurrection purchased righteousness for me. And by the blood of Jesus, he has made me righteous. He has made me holy. And I'm going to walk with God. And I'm going to love God. And I'm going to follow God. I'm going to be righteous. Hallelujah before him. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Amen. And Nancy, I apologize. I just walked in front of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sorry about that. Good. Amen. It's a good thing. Amen. That I might be found in him. Not righteousness of my own, but a righteousness that's from Christ, from God. Amen. So we need to own it. Everybody say, own it. I am right before God Almighty. Amen. The next thing we need to do is we need to keep it. We need to own it. We need to keep it. If you own it, then keep it. If you own it, don't let it go. If you own it, even when you have a struggle, don't let it go. Keep that righteousness fear. The Bible tells us how not only how to own it, we own it by faith. He also tells us how to keep it. He tells us how to keep it in 1 John 1, 9. He says, if you confess your sins. Remember, this is written to Christians. Every, how many people know even good Christians will stumble? Amen. So when you stumble, when you fall, you immediately confess it before God. I remember as a young believer, um, 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 being in my room and struggling with something, and I would immediately run to God. I wouldn't run away from God in my struggles. I'd run to God in my struggles. Hallelujah. And I would confess my sin. You know, I did this wrong, Lord. This is wrong, Lord. Lord, your word says to do this, and I did this. Father, forgive me in Jesus' name. Confess your sins. And you know what? Then I would immediately receive what he says because he is faithful to forgive our sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 4.23 says, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life or the springs of life. Everybody say, Conviction is my friend. And we need to be quick to be convicted. God shouldn't have to beat us up. One scripture should convict us. One little tug of the Holy Spirit that we're doing something that's not pleasing. We should, everybody say, Lord, make me quick. If I'm going to keep this righteousness, I need to be quick to be convicted. You know, you know, if Jesus wants me to take out the garbage, he should say, take out the garbage. He shouldn't have to yell. Somebody say amen. To the youth, that was a little hidden message from your parents. They shouldn't have to yell for you to take out the garbage. All the parents say amen. amen. Hallelujah. God's good. Just kidding here. Okay. You should be quick to be convicted. Quick to repent. If you've done something wrong, just a little bit of the Holy Spirit and you should run away. Stop it in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 You should be quick to receive, um, confess your sins to him. As soon as you see it, say, God, forgive me, and name that sin before God. You should be quick also to receive forgiveness. Once you confess your sins, don't belabor it. God doesn't belabor it. He's already paid for your sins. Quickly receive forgiveness. As soon as you confess it, receive the grace and the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And quick to walk in a righteousness reality. Let me say this. A righteous, even when you're struggling... A righteousness reality should be your go-to mindset. It should be what your mind rests on, that you're righteous before God. But I'm struggling. I'm righteous before God. But, but I'm righteous before God. You keep saying that in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, that you're righteous before God. And let me tell you something. You'll stop struggling. Amen. You'll have victory in the Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. His righteousness will work in you. Hallelujah. I want you to know sin will fall by the wayside. Amen. You can't do penance for your sins. You can't pay for your sins. The blood of Jesus washes your sins away. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So repent, ask forgiveness, and bang, you'll receive it just like that. And see yourself. See yourself as righteous. Hallelujah. It's not hard to get forgiveness. You know, he's not, you know, it's not like every day God wakes up and he says, well, I will forgive 10 people today. You know, the first 10 people, the first 10 callers, you know, will get forgiveness. Oh, man, I'm the 11th call. I got to walk around with condemnation for a whole day. But next tomorrow, I'm getting up at 4 in the morning. I don't care. I'm going to beat Pastor. He got my forgiveness. That was a joke. Not very good one, but hey, okay. So respond 
to conviction, not condemnation. Condemnation is not of God. Conviction is of God. Confess your sins. Be quick to, you know what I mean? Don't struggle with confessing sin. You know, he, it's like, like he doesn't know about it. You know, you're struggling to tell God that you sin. Like it's going to be a surprise to him. Remember, he, he's everywhere. He's omnipotent and he's omniscient. You know what I mean? Oh, I did this. And God's saying, I can't believe it. What a jerk you are. He knows. You know? He wants you to confess it because as you confess it, it, it's like you confess your sins, he gives you forgiveness. You confess your sins, he gives you his righteousness. You confess your sins, he cleanses you from all your unrighteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. So you need to own it, but then you need to keep it because we're walking in the righteousness of reality. So everybody say own it. Own, own what? Reality. reality. Keep it. Keep what? A righteousness reality. And thirdly, you need to fight with it. Remember, it says here in Ephesians 6 that put on the breastplate of righteousness. Whose righteousness? God's. It's God's armor. So it's God's righteousness that you put on. Now you fight with this. Now, this is not that complicated. Do you know what one of Satan's main name is? One of Satan's main name is the accuser of the brethren and I'd like to say, and sistering. So for Melissa, the queen, not the king, right, Melissa? Okay. He, Satan's job, Satan is a spirit, powerful being who has devoted himself to accuse you. Okay. The key is, is that while Satan's accusing you, don't take off your breastplate of what? So as you're being accused, as Satan is, lies in you, saying you're no good, you failed, you're not worthy, you're blah, 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 that kind of words, okay? Well, Satan is saying all this garbage to you, you don't take off your breastplate. You say, N-O, no, no, I don't believe this accusation, no, I don't believe guilt, no, I don't believe condemnation. I've disowned those things. I believe that I'm the righteousness of God. I stand in the presence of God by my righteousness. No, you can tell me how bad I am all you want, Satan. I stand here by the righteousness of God, by the sacrifice of Jesus, by his blood that flows freely into me. Somebody say amen. amen. I keep on the breastplate of righteousness. I've got the swagger. Why? Because I'm not going into battle on my own righteousness. Not by works of righteousness that we have done. I'm going into battle based on that Jesus is with me. That he'll never leave me or forsake me. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you take off your breastplate in the midst of a battle, you're diminishing the work of Christ. The work of Christ is efficient in your battles. Right? While the devil's condemning you, keep on. Say, it's God's armor. He told me to put on the whole armor. Amen. Don't take it off. You are righteous. That's your story, and you need to stick to it. Because I'm righteous before God. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So you are righteous. Everybody say, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Because I'm living in a... Righteousness reality. Somebody say amen. amen. And the fourth thing is you need to reign with it. It says in Romans, again, 5.17. It says, For by the transgressions of one, death reign. Through the one, much more, those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Who here has consciously received, I love this word, the abundance of grace? Okay, I want somebody to say, I received abundance of grace with a frown. I received abundance of grace, you got to smile. Have, have, we, Jesus didn't save you with a little dab of grace. He's got abundance of grace, rivers of grace, oceans of grace. Have, you, you might be walking in a dab of grace, but he gave you an abundance of grace. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. He threw you in his mercy and his forgiveness and his grace, Tim. Amen. His mercy endures forever, ever, ever. ever. His mercy endures. You got to listen to what the Bible's saying. It endures forever. Hallelujah. It says, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life. God wants you to have a spirit of swagger. 
in Jesus' name because you have abundance of grace. You have the gift of righteousness. You are right before Almighty God. You need to see yourself not as a victim of this life, but reigning through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know how to illustrate this except through Jesus Christ. Now, there's a lot of bad theology about who Jesus is. How many people know that Jesus Christ didn't function on earth as the Son of God? Philippians clearly says that he emptied himself and he took on the form of a bondservant. When Jesus functioned, he functioned as a man who was filled with God, not as God who came to be man. So he functioned as a man. And so that's why Jesus walked by faith. And this, that's why Jesus said the same works that I do and greater you'll do. Because he didn't do the works that he did based on his deity. He did them based on the fact that he became man and walked with God. What I said was a lot, but you need to hear this. And so... Jesus walked in a righteousness reality. He walked as a man who was right with God. He walked with the man who was filled with God. And that's why Jesus didn't do things on his own. He only did what he saw the Father doing. He, only, he, he lived his life listening to the Spirit of the Lord, to the Spirit of the Father. And he did what the Father told him to do. And, um, and so there was one day that he, he was out in the boat with his buds. And, um, and he was tired. And Jesus knows what to do when he's tired. He went to sleep. Some of you don't know what to do when you're really tired. Just go to bed. You, know, you don't need to watch that next TV show. You, know? you, you can catch it on we one. Somebody say amen. So Jesus went to bed in the front of the boat. And all of a sudden, while he's sleeping, there's a storm that comes on. It's a mighty storm. And these trained fishermen get freaked out because this storm is so intense and so mighty. And they get so freaked out because they do not even know that they are righteous before God. And they shake Jesus. And they say, Jesus, don't you care? At least we perish. And who was Jesus? He was a righteous man who was walking with God. And if you become a righteous man, if you know that you're a righteous man walking with God, you'll be able to sleep in the midst of your storm. Because while you're sleeping, he's on the job. Jesus was asleep. He was also at peace in the midst of the storm. Because the one who he was in right relationship is called Jehovah Shalom. He is the Lord of peace, the God of peace, the God of hope. Hallelujah. Storms didn't take away the nature of God, and he's walking with the nature of God. Storms didn't blind Jesus to who his father was. Why? Because he was walking in relationship with God. Am I making any sense here? Hallelujah. And then that same righteousness that allowed him to sleep, and the same righteousness that allowed him to have peace in the storm, is the same righteousness that allowed him to reign in life, and he was able to speak to that storm and command it to be still. And God tells us through the grace and the righteousness of God to reign in this life. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there was a time Jesus was preaching and he heard a whisper in his ear. And God said, feed them. And Jesus said, cool. He told his disciples that we need to feed these people. And they said, there's more than 5,000 men, 5,000 men, Jesus. Jesus, 5,000 men, Jesus, 5,000. That means that there's probably, if with, with the women folk, there's probably 10,000. You add the kids to that. Those kids are hungry. They've been here all day. You know how much teenagers eat. And, uh, and uh, there's probably 15, 20 that you want us to feed them. Just send them away. But righteousness obeys what it hears, that we need to feed them. And see, when you're righteous, you know you're in right relationship with Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, your provider. And so Jesus knew that he was in relationship with the provider God. It didn't matter if he had five loaves of bread or five loaves of fishes and five breads, whatever, five loaves of five fishes and five. didn't matter if he had 15 of them or 100 of them or 5,000 loaves of bread. It doesn't matter. Why? Because he's in 
righteous relationship with the God who created the world from nothing. And if that holy God whispered in his ear to feed the multitude, then he was going to break whatever he had. If all he had were the stones on the ground, they would turn in enough to feed them because he's in relationship with God. And if you're in relationship with God, you can walk in the presence of God and the, the aura of God, whether it's peace or, or joy. And you can walk in the power of God because righteousness causes you to reign in life. 